I've been wanting to use these cherry blossoms as a backdrop for a Mage Ducata intro ever since I started with the project. So here we go. Welcome to episode 7, the Magento Action Controller Integration Test Kata. How's that for a name? So in the previous episode we used unit tests to test drive the behavior of our action controller. And in this episode we're going to do something very similar, except that we're going to use integration tests. What type of tests should I use, you might ask? Well, the right answer is, as always, it depends. I myself, I use both types of tests. I use unit tests to hit every execution pass through my code, and I use integration tests to test my modules work in the whole of Magento. What type of tests you write depends on you. You get to choose. All that practicing these cutters does is it helps us to know how to test the different building blocks of Magento 2 customizations. So I hope it's going to be useful for you and that you enjoy this episode. Let's get started. I already created the module Mage to Carter Action Controller yet again, following the Skeleton Module Carter and the Route Config Carter. Relevant for the current Carter is only this empty Action Controller Skeleton class. Let's start by creating a new directory structure here controller index, oops, typo, and in here I want to create a index integration test. And we're not going to extend the usual PHP unit framework test case class directly, but instead an abstract controller class provided by the test framework, so this is the one we want. It provides us with a couple of methods that we'll use during the tests. As usual, I'll start with the test nothing test, um, fail one, two, three. Okay, very good. Now, let's think about what we want our controller to do. In this kata, we want to do two things. If this is a get request, I want our action controller to return a rendered HTML page. And if it's any other kind of request, I want to return a 404 page. Right, let's start by saying test can handle get requests. This get request set method get. Get is the default anyway, but I want to make it explicit because it's important for what our test does. The get request method is provided, by the way, by the abstract controller test framework class. And now we'll call this dispatch. And we'll need the front name for our controller, which happens to be made to kata. And index index is the action path and the action name. So this is almost like a functional test through the browser, um, except that the test framework will not send any output. But now we can take the response and we can make assertions about it. For example, we can check the response code. I want this to be a 200. This get response, get HTTP response code. Run the test. And we're still green. So even though we only have an empty controller action, seems like that's already enough to give a 200 response code. We'll have to extend the test to make it a little bit more specific, so it doesn't pass anymore. For example, let's check it renders an HTML page and assert there's a body tag in the response body. This get response get body. Let's see if the test still succeeds. And look at that, very good, it fails. The assertion fails that body is contained within an empty string. So, what do we need to do for this route to return a rendered HTML page? We need to inject the page factory. So let's go and override the constructor and add a dependency. And let's see, it's this one. But we want the factory for this class. Page factory, initialize that as a field, and now we can return this page factory 
create. And because we added a constructor dependency, we have to clear the sandbox directory with the generated files, unless of course we've got test cleanup enabled. But in my PHP unit XML, I've got test cleanup disabled, so I'll just always have to do it manually. Good, so now let's rerun the test. And it passes, very good. Now, if you want to, you can look at this page in the browser and you will see it will still look empty, but the page actually was rendered. It's just that it's an HTML page with an empty body. It's just the root template. Depending on what you want your real controller to do, you could test for any kind of page element to be present in the response body. Good, let's move on to the next test case, which would be that it cannot handle non-get requests. Let's use a post. This get request set method post, where post is just an example for non-get request. Now let's dispatch mage to kata index index this assert same 404 this get response get HTTP response code. This is enough to make the test fail, but there's another assertion provided by the test framework abstract controller test case, and that is this assert for for not found. However, that does not take the HTTP response code into account. It just checks the controller name and it checks that the text for for not found is part of the response body. For me, the HTTP response code is essential so I always include a test for that. Either of these assertions would have been enough for our purposes. Um, it doesn't hurt to add both either. It could even be argued that all of them together are part of the same logical assertion. And very good, we've got a failure again. Failed asserting that 200 is identical to 404. So how do we make this pass? Um, well, first, Let's wrap this into an if condition. If this get request get method is get, hmm. unfortunately PHP Storm thinks that get request get method isn't available. Let's look for the return type of get request. It's type hinted to return a request interface instance, and that doesn't contain a method called get method. I don't want to keep that PHP storm warning. So how about we override that return type and specify an HTTP request instead. Override the method get request. Now we can override the type hint so PHP storm knows it returns a HTTP request, which removes the warning PHP storm showed on get method. Now this isn't a proper solution. A real solution would require a pull request to add the get method method to the request interface. But I do prefer this to having PHP storm warnings all over the place in my code. Now back to making the test pass. All we did so far was encapsulate our already existing code so we can add new functionality without breaking what already existed. Well, we want to forward the visitor to a 404 page. So we need to be able to return a forward result, which means we need a forward factory. Forward factory. One more time, forward factory. Initialize that as a field. So now we can say else return this forward factory create. Hmm, we don't get auto completion for the factory. It seems it hasn't been generated yet. Also, we added a new argument to the constructor, so we need to clear the generated classes cache again, because I want to now rerun the tests so the factory gets generated, so PHP Storm can give me auto completion, not only on the factory, but also on the objects it creates. I expect the test to fail because we are not forwarding to a no root 404 page yet. Um, in fact, we're pretty much forwarding nowhere.
And as expected, the test fails, but once the indexing of PHPStorm is complete, yeah, here we go, now the method is known. So let's extract this into a local var and specify where we want to forward to. We want to forward to the no root action. Okay, let's run the test again. And we're green. Excellent. So the only thing left is a bit of refactoring. Let's take all of this and move it into a method handle non get request. Don't need that. Uh, let's take this and move it into a method handle get request. And uh, let's take this here into a method is get request. Okay, now I can do one of my favorite refactorings again. Replace simple if else condition with ternary operator, and we're good. Oh, this here I want to move down. It's not really important. Handle non get request, handle get request, is get request. Okay, that looks pretty good. What about our test? Yeah, the test looks rather good too. Good, and that completes this kata. Okay, I hope you agree that integration tests for action controllers are very valuable, but, well, since they're rather slow, I do like having my unit tests, especially if things get a bit more complex. By the way, quite often I write my integration tests after I write the production code. But of course, in those cases, I always drive the creation of the production code using TDD and unit tests. Of course, if I already know exactly how I want my action controller to do its job, I can also write the integration test beforehand. Finally, as always, please go ahead and delete all the code that we've written. Take a moment to reflect on what you've learned. And then we can do the kata again tomorrow. Thank you for your commitment to writing better quality code and helping the merchants and yourself and every other developer that might have to work with your code and the whole ecosystem around Magento. Please reach out to me as always. You can use the comment functionality underneath this video or you can reach me on Twitter. I am really curious to hear your feedback. Thank you for watching. See you again next time.